Psilocybin is a naturally occurring tryptamine found in various species of mushrooms, and in vivo this phosphate ester is hydrolyzed to reveal a psychoactive tryptamine psilocin, and you can see structurally this is a close relative of dimethyltryptamine with this extra hydroxy group. And in 2004, Lewis and co-workers wanted to prepare psilocin for the purposes of having an analytical standard, and so I'm going to show you their Laroque type synthesis, which was carried out based on this substituted aniline starting material. A common and quite classical way to synthesize these tryptamine derivatives is the reaction of an indole with uh, oxalyl chloride. And so the indole ring picks up one of the acid chloride moieties, and then the remaining acid chloride can be reacted with an amine such as dimethylamine. And this affords a diketone intermediate, and of course the hydroxy group has to be protected, for example, as an acetate um, during the acid chloride coupling step. And then it takes quite drastic reducing conditions, so typically refluxing with lithium aluminium hydride to reduce out this pair of carbonyls to the tryptamine side chain, and at the same time the acetate protecting group is reduced off. Uh, but this Laroque type route is a bit different, and so the disconnection takes place across the five-membered ring of the indole there. And so one of the starting materials, like we saw at the beginning, is this aniline, and then the other half comes from this substituted trimethylsilyl acetylene. Meta-anisidine was used as the starting material and a directed ortholithiation approach was used to install the iodine. And so this Bach protected aniline was deprotonated with tertiary butyl lithium, affording an aryl lithium intermediate that was reacted with molecular iodine to afford this iodinated product. Tertiary butyl lithium is extremely reactive and you might not want to handle it unless you absolutely had to. Uh, the alternative if you wanted to use the more easily handled N-butyl lithium uh, would involve the use of a different protecting group because the uh, Bach group isn't compatible with N-butyl lithium, so a pivot oil protecting group is required as well. This enables the directed ortholithiation under milder conditions, but then the pivaloate group is a lot harder to remove than the Bach group, typically requiring an overnight reflux and strong acid, so really it's a trade-off between the ease of the removal of the protecting group and the reactivity of the organolithium used. And for the other component in the synthesis, this commercially available alkyne was reacted with tozol chloride to afford the tozolate, and then rather than some sort of reductive amination approach, the authors were able to get away with just a simple alkylation to install the dimethyl amino moiety. The terminal alkyne was deprotonated with butyl lithium, and then reacted with trimethyl chlorosilane to install this silyl protecting group, which is vital for the Laroque synthesis, which requires a di-substituted alkyne. And none of these steps required anything like column chromatography. It's quite a small and volatile molecule. Uh, all the purification was done by distillation, so they were able to carry it out at a reasonable scale. And the next step is the Laroque indole synthesis part of the reaction. So in situ, the palladium 2 acetate is reduced to palladium naught, and that can do an oxidative insertion into the carbon iodine bond to form this aryl palladium species. And the aryl palladium coordinates to the alkyne, and then you get a syn carbopalladation with a palladium directed to the more hindered terminus of the alkyne, in this case the terminus that bears the trimethylsilyl group, and we formed the uh, new carbon-carbon bond here. And this carbopalladation process puts the palladium quite close to the nitrogen, so after some ligand exchange, the nitrogen is coordinating onto the palladium, and then a reductive elimination occurs to form this carbon-nitrogen bond, and that completes the indole ring synthesis. And after the reductive elimination, of course, you've got palladium zero, which can re-enter the catalytic cycle. And we don't need this trimethylsilyl group anymore, so that was removed by overnight treatment with trifluoroacetic acid in a proto desilylation And so the final step in the silicin synthesis is the removal of this methoxy group via treatment with boron tribromide to reveal the free hydroxy substituent. Uh, silicin itself isn't particularly stable towards air or prolonged storage, and there are a couple of different ways that the phosphate ester might be introduced of psilocybin. Uh, a more classical reagent would be dibenzyl chlorophosphonate, and then the benzyl groups can be removed with hydrogen and palladium on alumina. Uh, Alex Shulgin mentions this reagent in Tikal as providing very low yields in the phosphorylation step, and also the reagent itself is apparently unstable, needs to be handled in solution. Uh, in more recent times, this alternative reagent, tetrabenzyl pyrophosphate, has become available, and apparently this is easier to work with and higher yielding. Uh, of course, it's less atom economical because you're throwing away half of the molecule, but sometimes that's what it takes to have a good synthesis. And then, again, under slightly different conditions, the benzyl protecting groups are removed with hydrogen and palladium on carbon this time to afford psilocybin. There are some other ways to make tryptamines such as these, so for example Gia and co-workers used a HEC-type cyclization 
Uh, this involved the reaction of an orthoiodoaniline with this thalamido-protected long-chain aldehyde. And the first thing that happens is the nitrogen attacks the carbonyl, you get a condensation and the formation of an enamine. And then like in the earlier rock type process, in situ we'll get palladium zero, oxidative insertion to form an aryl palladium. And then this carries out a carbopalladation on the enamine to afford an intermediate like this. And there's a hydrogen at this position and so the palladium can carry out a beta hydride elimination just like in a standard heck reaction uh, and that completes the formation of the indole ring. And then to complete this synthesis the nitrogen needs to be methylated so the thalamido group was removed by treatment with hydrazine. This liberated the free terminal amine which was treated with a mixture of formaldehyde and sodium cyanoborohydride to afford the doubly methylated product. Of course you can just bring the dimethylamino group in from the start using aldehyde such as this. Of course, people have also used the very classical fischer indole synthesis to make tryptamines such as these. So in this case, the starting material is a phenyl hydrazine, uh, the same long chain aldehyde as before. Um, and the first step is the condensation to form this enamine. And then the key part of the fischer indole synthesis is this sigmatropic uh, rearrangement, an electrocyclic process that forms this carbon-carbon bond here and affords a, a pair of imines. And then because this one's in the ring, of course, there's a loss of a proton and the regain of aromaticity. And then this aniline-type nitrogen condenses with the amine next door. Um, and if you push the arrows all the way through, that completes the fischer indole synthesis. And this was used to prepare the drug risotriptan. Unfortunately, the fischer indole synthesis isn't really well suited for a four-substituted tryptamine. And this comes out of considerations of the symmetry of the product. So the starting material would have to look something like this, phenylhydrazine. But of course there's no preference for which way round the enamine is going to sit before the electrocyclic process takes place. And so if you follow either of these pathways through, uh, you'll either have a 4 or a 6 substituted tryptamine. And it's hard to imagine a scenario where the R group exerts a significant influence to which of these cyclizations is favoured.